It's time for Global Insight, where we speak to people from around the world on issues making headlines. And today we venture out of the Arirang studio to bring you the special edition from the heart of Seoul, where our guest has been on a four day state visit. Now, President of Costa Rica, Carlos Alvarado Quesada, is one of the world's youngest heads of state, a, mu a former musician, uh, author, and now an honorary citizen of Seoul. And we sit down with him today to ask him some of the biggest questions that all societies around the world are facing amid their efforts to recover from this pandemic. Well, buenos dias, Mr. President. It's wonderful to have you here on our show. And well, as a sole citizen, I, I must ask, how has our city been treating you? Oh, wonderful. I'm so impressed of, even though Costa Rica and Korea are somehow far away, I'm impressed of how easily we can relate and, and it's been a warm welcome and I mean, it's, it's been amazing. And well, you've met with our president, um, President Moon Jae-in, of course, and well, your visit really, it proves just how uh, closer our countries are becoming in our bilateral ties, which is hitting uh, six decades next, next year in 2022. And well, in fact, you and President Moon upgraded our bilateral ties to a, an action-oriented comprehensive partnership. Could you define this for us? Well, as I mentioned, even though Costa Rica and Korea might seem far away because of the distance, when you think about the values that unite us, those values are really strong and embedded in our societies. We're talking about democracy, we're talking about human rights, we're talking about sustainability, and for both of our peoples, the longing of peace. So those values bring us together in the multilateral diplomatic agenda, but both in cooperation and even on trade issues. So that is why we have decided to take to a next level the, the partnership between our, com uh, our countries because of those common values. And this means working together addressing climate change, working together in innovation, for example, in hydrogen, electric mobility, digital, tourism, film industry. There are many fields that we are working together, research in medical trials. I mean, it's, it's outstanding and we are just grasping the tip of the iceberg of what we can do together. And it looks like you've actually been um, leading by example really is it seems that you've been communicating with President Moon throughout the pandemic and while well, Costa Rica and South Korea they were lauded as uh, well they were lauded for um, initially their initial response to this pandemic uh, for being able to really keep those uh, infection numbers and fertilities down. Well, how are you and President Moon cooperating to tackle this health crisis? Well, at the beginning, uh, we have to say that uh, Korea was one of the first countries that provided help to Costa Rica. They sent us uh, many the, um, technical assistance and also equipment to address this. And we are very thankful to Korea's president, to its government and to its people. Also by sharing information, it is true that through the cultural behavior of both our countries, we have managed to uh, resist and contain the, uh, the virus. And now, similar to here in, in Korea, in Costa Rica, we are starting a process to gradually open up more uh, the economy. It's also interesting that uh, in the case of Costa Rica, we never went into a lockdown. We could not make a lockdown because we needed people to go to work and we needed the economy to keep moving to preserve jobs. Uh, and what I've seen in Korea is also a great performance in, in that sense. So that also strengthens uh, the concept that we can do things similarly and therefore that we need to work together. I see. And well, on top of the public health crisis, of course, climate change, of course, has been another major agenda, another challenge that all countries face. And it was highlighted very recently 
earlier this month at the COP26 summit where you and other world leaders from over 100 countries, um, you pledged to actively tackle deforestation and you also pledged your net zero goals. And well, you've been uh, pushing for these goals for quite a long time, even before uh, the COP26 summit uh, came about. And well, you've also uh, produced very ambitious net zero policies. How do you hope to see Costa Rica really leading uh, by example, by positive example, and working with South Korea in tackling this very um, urgent crisis that the world faces? Well, climate change is something we need to address because of uh, an ethical issue. If we do not change the current course of the climate crisis, there won't be a planet for us, for our children or our grandchildren. So it's an ethical matter because it's the only generation in human history that has faced this kind of problem. It's basically an existential problem. But also because it's an opportunity. Many people think that changing the way we produce or changing the way we, we generate energy is going to threat the economy. And we believe it's the other way around. For example, in Costa Rica, our conservation of forests did not harm the economy. On the other hand, it increased our tourism based on an ecotourism system. We have 5% of the world biodiversity, even though our territory is not as big. And also, we have to say that given the policies we adopted decades ago, today, we have 99.5% of our electricity being clean and renewable. So that is an example for others that it is possible to move into that direction. We know that countries need a transition, but it's possible to, to reach that. Let me give you two examples of what seems to be impossible, but it is possible. Uh, in the case of transportation in Costa Rica, transportation is still our largest carbon footprint. But given that our electricity is clean and renewable, we can transform all our public transportation from fossil fuels to electric and hydrogen transportation and to eliminate our carbon footprint. That is why the alliance with Korea is key because we have the clean energy and Korea has the technology to do that. And that's one example we can show the world it is possible, Korea and Costa Rica together. Another example, it's uh, the high ambition coalition for people in nature. In 2019, Costa Rica launched its, its, its decarbonization plan. It was one of the first in the world. But also, that year, we committed to create this high ambition coalition with France and with the UK. This 30 by 30 goal means that by 2030, we need to protect 30% of the land territory and 30% of the oceans in order to address climate change through nature-based solutions. And at the time people said it's too ambitious, it's going to be very difficult, and that was two years ago. A couple of weeks ago in Glasgow, in COP26, we started two years ago with five countries only. Two years later we have 76 countries committed with that 30 by 30 high ambition coalition gold including countries such as India and most recently Madagascar. So it means that difficult things that seem impossible can be possible in order to change the direction of the, the climate crisis. Exactly, and your um, more than $1.5 billion project on electric trains, now that's getting a lot of South Korean companies excited, I believe. And well, what other um, opportunities do you see for green partnership between Costa Rica and South Korea? Well, as I mentioned, the transformation of transportation is a big one because um, we have the clean energy and the necessity and Korea has the technology. So that, that there is an area that we can work with vehicle manufacturers, with trains, with the public transportation organizations, but also in terms of improving the, the way we produce. We have had here in Korea a alliance with GGGI, with uh, the president of GGGI, former Secretary General of the United Nations Ban Ki-moon, and we're going to establish an office in Costa Rica, and now we're working in two projects. One, to fix carbon through the roots in production, 
put it in on the soil back. And other to improve the other way, we use refrigerators to reduce emissions and consumption. So those are very practical. And in the new alliance and association with Korea, it's not only bilateral cooperation. The plan is, given that Costa Rica is now also an OECD country, the plan is for Costa Rica and Korea, and Korea to become a place that we can spread triangular cooperation in the rest of Central America and in the Caribbean. Also to have the support of Korea go beyond. Uh, and that's a very exciting uh, news as well of this new kind of association between our countries. It is indeed, and these in innovative collaborations are what this world strongly needs. And while you're a development expert and you actually enacted some structural reforms that really paved the way for Costa Rica's admission into the OECD, and it looks like the world could do with a bit of your advice as the need for socio-economic reforms, it's been made all the more apparent throughout this crisis. We've seen wealth, the concentration of wealth burgeoning at the top um, among tech elites and multimillionaires. Whereas average uh, income for the average Joe, it's remained pretty much stagnant. How should our societies really tackle this uh, wealth and income inequality? Well, one, that's one of the key issues that the pandemic has revealed. Uh, the, the gap of inequality has widened. Many things we need to address. One has to do with education in terms of the technological means that everybody has access to equipment and access to connectivity in order to have high quality education, regardless of their background. In every country, even Costa Rica, we need to fight to uh, have every kid in public or private school in every part of the country with that kind of connectivity. Also, one of the things that we are experiencing in Latin America and in emerging economies is that the, our economies are having debt problems. Why? Because our economies decreased during the year of the pandemic. The expenditure increased due to the vaccines, due to all the expenses of taking care of the pandemic. And we had already have debts and now our debt levels are increasing. So to address this, there's the opportunity to have a fiscal system more equitable. And that means um, charging the taxes on those who are most wealthy, for example, of, of uh, homes. Those who have uh, wealthy homes, uh, they should pay more than the rest of the, of the regular citizens. Also, people that have high salaries should be paying a little bit more. But this, in a sense, to have a more to have more solidarity in the system. Also, companies should be, um, well, we, we should make sure that they are paying their fair share of their taxes. But this is not only for kind of a prosecution perspective. This is also to have societies that, are more, that have more cohesion and they can become successful in governments that use those taxes in the best way. That is why for us it was critical to become part of the OECD because we want to be more efficient and more citizen driven in terms of our results as, as a government. Well, you mentioned household debt and along with household debt, um, South Korea and Costa Rica also face other socio-economic challenges, um, particularly when it comes to productivity. Uh, our countries are facing a rapidly aging population. Many of our workers are overworked and tired, according to the OECD. And well, um, as we face this, uh, as we face these challenges of declining productivity, how should our countries then boost it to look into the future? Well, there's. I'm not particularly a a expert in that specific field, but even though I used to be Minister of Labour. But one thing I know, and we should learn from other OECD countries, both Costa Rica and Korea, is that we do not only need to work hard, but we need to work smart. That means concentrating the efforts in the results. The time we use or devote for tasks is not necessarily, and how hard we work is not necessarily the, the standard. The standard should be results. We should be more result driven. And, uh, and also, I think it's critical 
for us to balance with another topic that is very important in our societies, which is mental health. We need to take care of uh, the mental health of our people. Uh, so that's why important balance is very important. We have seen that through the pandemic. One of the things that hit the most our people was mental health because people could not go out or because of the, the anxiety or not knowing if they were going to lose their jobs or children being in home and not at school. So we need to take care of mental health of, uh, of our of our citizens. So one commercial there is that if people in Korea or all over the world that want to take care of their mental health, they can also go and relax to the beaches and national parks in Costa Rica. They are known to be one of the best places of the world to, to go visit for ecotourism and also to, uh, to gain energy again. Right, well, in terms of, you know, in regards to public health, that would be a great, you know, opportunity for South Koreans to go and relax and hopefully we'll have some gov government subsidies for that. <laughs> but, uh, um, okay, so, well, now women, youth and marginalised groups, they've been among the worst hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. How should countries then really include them and put them at the forefront of their economic recovery plans? Well, women have been very hit. Actually, the unemployment uh, information shows that uh, the employment that has been recovered has been in a rate faster. There is faster recovery in men than in women. Also, the formal jobs are being more recovered, but informal jobs also hit again more women than men. So we have to uh, implement policies that are differentiated for women. Also, it's critical to have uh, rules for equal salary for equal job. In every country, we need to strive for that, for those policies. We need to, to work for real equality between men and, and women. For youth, it's very important the training and the skills. Not only the academic training, but also the social skills. Because to, in today's world, it's not only about what you learn uh, in a, from a technical standpoint. It's also your creativity, your capacity to learn new things, your teamwork abilities and your pro solving problem abilities. And those are more uh, social uh, abilities. So we need to make sure that our young people, they have the training, both academic and social skills, and they have enough opportunities so they can build their own, their own livelihoods. Uh, so yes, we are, those are areas that the pandemic has shown that our societies need to work more and more to, to move forward. Well, in terms of moving forward, Mr. President, South Korea and Costa Rica's processes of democratization, economic development and uh, recent policy innovations have rendered them middle powers in global governance and amid all this geopolitical tensions that we're seeing, trade wars and also polarizing politics in practically every country, um, do you see a growing role for these countries uh, to really help build back better and also promote multilateralism? Well, for the past years there was a scenario in which multilateralism was, let's say, uh, there was a setback on multilateralism. But I believe that from uh, years to now, there's been a movement in which there has been like a restart on multilateralism. And even though the pandemic is, has complicated the situation, we've seen somehow multilateralism coming back, for example, in Glasgow. Even though we do not reach the the goals or the enough goals that we needed, yes, there was important advancement. So that means multilateralism, it's working and it's worth working for multilateralism. Today's problem can't be solved by one or two actors without the support of the international community. So we do need to, to work to, together as a global community. And I believe that's also one of the things that strengthens the partnership between Costa Rica and Korea. Given that we have similar values, also we are ready to work together, both of our countries and governments, not only bilaterally, but in the international scenario, to have those values propelled, human rights and democracy, and also peace. 
very strong value-based uh, relationship that we have. And well, now for a very important question, as a former musician, how do you rate the recent success of K-pop around the world? Well, I have to say that uh, K-pop has been, uh, I mean, it's, it's amazing how uh, teenagers and young people in Costa Rica and elsewhere are so drawn into K-pop. I have to say that given that I'm a, I'm a, I like classic rock, it's, I, I think it's not particularly for my generation, but it's so impressive how that gets, uh, that has done this cultural uh, leapfrogging going from being something from Korea and now being something practically universal, which is quite outstanding, and I celebrate that. And I think it's happening in other fields. For example, in the film industry, uh, I put the, always the example, my parents, they love uh, watching uh, Korean uh, films and series on Netflix, and they keep telling me, oh, I love this, Korean series and I found that outstanding. My parents in Costa Rica, in their living room, uh, half a way, half a world away from here, watching stories that happen here in, in Korea and uh, it, it's remarkable. Well, it would be lovely to go to the beaches of Costa Rica and have South Koreans listening to K-pop there, I suppose. It will be lovely. I mean, th those are the kinds of things we can do. You can picture uh, K-pop bands, but also the film industry have uh, film in, uh, in Costa Rica. We just recently have a law to, to support uh, the film industry in Costa Rica. And also that, uh, that diversity that we can both bring to the table, being at the same time so different, but at the same time so close. So those are the things we want to strengthen. And we definitely want to see more cultural collaboration. Uh, next year, we're marking 60 years of diplomatic ties. Now, what do you hope to see from our two countries in the next six decades? Oh, wow, that's a great question. Well, my ambition uh, as a Costa Rican and now as a president is to have the kind of human development uh, that Koreans have had in the past decades that kind of growth and that kind of uh, sense of opportunity. Uh, but in a Costa Rican way, we want, uh, I think we need to follow that example that through hard work, through discipline, through innovation, uh, ch good change is possible. Uh, for me, Korea is one of the great examples. And I was in Costa Rica, when I have spoken to the, to the National Assembly, I keep saying that we need to look to good examples and to, f to picture that I say we need to be, we need to become the South Korea of the Americas, to picture that. Uh, so for the next uh, 60 years, I do believe we need to complement ourselves because we have things that are complementary. We have to keep those values strong, that legacy. We have to establish a partnership in which uh, we want not only to request things from Korea, but also to give back. Those kinds of things are the, the ones that, that, um, that I foresee happening. And who knows, we might have a joint Costa Rican-Korean film, a mixed K-pop band of Costa Ricans and Koreans. We can take our free trade agreement to a next level. Uh, I mean, we can, we can have more Korean companies established in Costa Rica. We have uh, actually today, uh, we, we received the, the announcement of one Korean company that's going to triple its investment in Costa Rica. So the potential is there and we have just to grasp a little bit of it and we could go even further. I'm thinking kimchi empanadas. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Well, it can be kimchi and gallo pinto, which is a national dish. And we can have tastings of coffee uh, and of soju. Um, coffee. Yes, and I think th those kinds of things could put uh, our peoples together. I also have found that it's, and, and I have not yet understand why, but Costa Ricans and Koreans tend to be, they, eas they to relate very easily. I mean, we are very uh, straightforward, 
we are very easy going in terms of relating to each other, we are respectful. So there's also an advantage. It's we don't create a huge distance. It's it's for us easy easy to to relate. So that's another advantage. And well finally you wear a lot of hats, you wear multiple hats. You are formerly a musician, a writer, a scholar, minister president and now of course an honorary citizen of Seoul. If I may, uh, what's next for you? Well, I think it will, for the next months after I end my presidency will be resting. <laughs> I, will, I need to, to have a, a pause and to relax a bit for, because for the now past nine years I've been in political campaign, then been a minister, then again in a political campaign, now being a president. So I want to, to take a pause, to spend more time with my kid, with old or eight-year-old Gabriel, and then decide what the, what the next step is going to be. Uh, but for the time being, it will be a, a perhaps well-deserved pause. Well deserved indeed and well it was again it was wonderful having you on our show Mr President and well we have to let you go now as you have a plane to catch. Mm -hmm. Well thank you again uh, President Carlos Alvarado Quesada, President of Costa Rica. It was a delight having you, an honour and have a safe tra trip back to Costa Rica. Thank you very much and thank you for having me.